What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ryan. Welcome to the west coast of Florida I'm in beautiful Tampa Bay. I'm with my main man Vic from Landshark Outdoors and I'm with Max from Grouper MVP. We're on, we're on his boat today. Max has been on a lot of good bites and I'm just super excited to get to a new fishery. I'm super excited to be out here doing something that we haven't been doing. Max is right now getting the cast net out. He's gonna try and catch us some solid baits. He's gonna try and catch some little greenbacks. They're all up and down. All the greenbacks are up and down the pilings right now. So he's gonna put some chum out, try and cast at them, and then we're gonna go fish. It's gonna be a great video. So check this out. I got a bucket of what looks like sand. This is kind of little tropical fish chum. Uh, it's a little something something that Max has going on. And I'm chumming the baits of the boat. I've never really done this on the east coast of Florida. We normally always either sabiki our baits or they're really, really thick, we cast them. Out. But we're sitting here spot locked with the trolling motor down and I'm just throwing the chum. It looks like I'm, you know, putting food in a fish tank, really. It's just really, really small little fine particles. But on that last throw, as soon as Max threw on him, we got the best throw of the day. So he's throw bait at me. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Got him again. That's what we like to see. That is what we like to see. A net full of bait and a bunch of smiles. What else can you ask for? I like to see when you guys hit that like and subscribe button on Ryan's channel right now. Or you comment below. <laughs> Look at that. That's just great. That's great work. Give this guy a raise. One net full in the well already. We'll go number two. Let's try and save him. Look at these little guys. What I like about fishing in other places is everyone calls baits different things. So on the East Coast, we're going to call this a pilcher. Over here, he's calling them a greenie. What we call greenies are thread fins. So there's a bunch of different names for anything. But one thing I know is that East Coast or West Coast, this thing's getting eaten. I'll let the, guy, uh, let the mangroves feed on this one. They get bit. There's a bunch of mangrove snapper. I'm gonna see if I can get them to come out from underneath the bridge right here just by throwing some baits. You can see them on the camera. Oh yeah, look at them, look at them. Wolf pack. Wow, give this oh, cameraman yeah. a raise They're for real. Freaking, they are flared, look at them all. Uh, Holy lot, smokes, Max. And Do we even leave? <laughs> Do you see that ball of mangroves? like a little ledge and it'll work its way up to like nine feet and where we're throwing all of these greenbacks is going to be like five feet of water and you'll see them all the mangroves will come out of the, the little holes in the rocks and stuff start eating the chum and we'll get them fired up and we'll start putting our baits in and then we'll start catching the mangroves if you guys like changing up the locations you know west coast now east coast west coast a little bit of everything be sure to subscribe to max grouper mvp on youtube check him out because you know, doing collaborations and stuff like that, that's how we all grow together. And you know, he's on he's been on some solid fish. He's probably caught been on some of the coolest grouper bites I've ever seen when I checked out his video. So if you're interested, you know, Tampa area fishing, give him a shout. Alright guys, check this out. So we got a bunch of little baits, all those stuff that we just cast on it. Throwing them out and we're chumming. There's a bunch of mangroves sitting down a little bit deeper in the water column and they're just coming up and having a heyday feeding on all these little baits. Take one of the baits. I'm just using a dead one. We got a bunch of live ones in the well too. Hooked right through the throat. Pitch it out and just let it sink naturally with all the chum. So it just looks like everything else. How are we feeling, Max? Pretty good. Oh, I just, oh. just had a fish. Earlier we had to deal with the dolphins, but now we found a spot. Dolphins aren't here. Mangroves are coming up to the surface. They're just being a little smart right now, eating the bait off the hook. So we're gonna keep chumming and hopefully we can get them fired up. 
Yes, yes. Oh, little guy. But a snapper nonetheless. Not bad. Choked it down. Let's These guys, some... you know, certain fish are just ferocious. So you got sea trout and mangrove snapper. Look at him just popping his jaws like that. <laughs> I've been bit by these guys before. I was a little kid. I was trying to get my hook back, and he just went pop and grabbed the tip of my finger. It's not fun. Got it. Okay. 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 Mangrove, boys. Oh, look at that keeper. Yeah, that's a good one. That's Don't trample nice him on my foot, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman Vic almost went down. Ah! Look at that guy. Beautiful. He'll eat just fine. Delicious fish. Honestly, mangrove and snappers in general are just some of my favorite fish to eat. So that's probably like a 13 incher. We'll put him right in the box. If I don't drop him in the water first. And shout out to Max for putting us on him because uh, you know that Ryan and I would have no idea what we're doing here if it wasn't for him. Yeah, I've been fishing probably Tampa Bay now for two years and I've learned. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. Just got smoked, but it's been a grind to learn this whole area. There's so much structure in here. There's like there's miles and miles of shipping channel and rock piles and everything. But if you just come out the Skyway, these rocks are pretty easy to get on compared to the shipping channel. But in the shipping channel, you can find some nice gags and stuff, and we might try that later on today. Oh, flared. Oh, Dude, instant. That was sick. Right on the rocks, huh? Yeah. I'm, you think you could get them on a booty right here? They really have this cool blue streak underneath their eye. I know. They're very cool looking. I don't notice that when they're offshore. Yeah. Though. So offshore we were catching these the other day and I posted a video, did that. I did a catch clean cook of mahi, but we caught a bunch of mangroves and we would pull them off the bottom and they're like orange. These inshore fish are pretty, you know, they're like light brown and then tan. So it's kind of cool. Fish are exactly the same size, but based on their environment, they look very, very different. You know, there's, I've been chasing a lot of big fish lately, big tarpon, big snook, big redfish, and you're happy if you catch one in the day, but sometimes it's, it's just fun to go and do some low stress fishing. You know, we're, we're out here fishing light rods, light tackle, live chum and all of these fish. And there's not all that, that high anxiety, like, oh, if I mess this one shot up, I'm not going to catch anything. Sometimes it's, it's good to just, you know, go, go out and talk a little smack with your boys and just catch a few fish. You're the only one talking smack here. <laughs> what do you mean? He's been talking so much smack. It's just off camera, I swear. A 35 pound yellowfin on it. Oh, okay. Get him. Nice Dolphin! <laughs> no! Man, those things are fast. Oh. <laughs> I thought I had them. So fast. That was a big mango voice that was. I'll make them bigger. Welcome back to the dock. You guys just saw us catching all these mangrove snapper over in Tampa Bay. We're back on the East Coast now. We're gonna fillet some of these guys up and then we're gonna make some delicious lunch with them. So this guy right here just got a seven inch Dexter flexible bolt fillet. Flexible fillet, is it hard to talk today or is it just me? It's the wind, it must be It's the wind. probably the wind, the planes, you know, all that. Just filleting it like any other fish. Simple cut right here, down, until I get to his spine, boom, right there. Then turn the fish so he's towards me and I'm gonna make a line down the top of the fish. Work my way down the top of the snapper with just the tip of the knife. This is just starts out the fillet. And you wanna make sure that you're not jumping to the other side of the fish. So there's a spine that runs straight up and down here. And with a smaller fish like that, it's pretty easy to jump to the other side. So just use your tip of your knife, feel it out. And over time, you'll get an idea for what's right and what's wrong. Then I'm gonna lift up with my thumb just slightly. We're gonna start to separate the meat from the spine. Slowly just making passes and not, not trying to force anything because if there's some resistance, there's probably some bone or some skeletal structure that we don't wanna cut through. Small fish like this, super easy to jump to the other side of the backbone. So now, see that backbone? I'm gonna slowly angle my knife down towards the fillet table and start to get the second half. There. And again, this is something that just take your time, don't rush it. You're not in a, a fish cleaning shop or you're not in a, a fish cleaning house where you need to get them done as fast as possible. So if you feel like you're a beginner when cleaning fish, just slow it down. That's all you gotta do. 
break through this rib cage here. Pretty easy. And we got all that. Try and leave the guts in if I can. And then cut that last piece and we have our beautiful mangrove snapper filet. Definitely not the biggest filet in the world, but that's okay. You don't always catch a giant fish every time you go out. And this is gonna be perfect for today's recipe. A nice thin piece of fish is exactly what we want in the kitchen. The other side's the same thing. Typically with any fish, when, whenever you're doing the opposite side, the filet is not gonna be as good, just because the fish doesn't lay as evenly once you knock one side off. So again, just take your time a little bit. Got our initial cut, angle our knife away from us and work down. Again, try to avoid hopping to the other side of the spine, other side of his bones. I'm keeping my knife fairly flat to start that cut because if I angle it down too much, I'm gonna jump to that other side and then I'm gonna kinda have to change my tactics for how I get the meat off. Lift up with my thumb and start to work my way down, separating the meat. Work my way to the rib cage, up here. Break that rib cage, now I'm past it. And now I can start to cut, to cut that bottom edge off. So I can start my cut here, start to work it. And then the rest of that meat from the tail, we'll just separate right off. We got one mangrove snapper filet. We got two mangrove snapper filets, and we got a mangrove snapper carcass that I'm gonna pop the eyes out. Pretty clear, pretty translucent. Let's uh, send him on his last swim, as Vic and Brooke always say, as the plane's coming overhead. Catfish are gonna munch on him. Oh, they're raging. So with mangrove snapper, you can do skin on or skin off. If we were gonna do skin on, I would have knocked all the scales off of the spoon or the backside of a butter knife or something. But today's recipe, we're calling for skin off. So skinning it, just like any other fish, lining up the fish onto the fillet table near the edge of the fillet table, where I can keep my knife pretty flat. Snapper have scales and thick skin, so it's a little bit easier of a fillet to knock the skin off. I'm taking these two fingers and digging my fingernails into it so this doesn't slide, and then I'm pressing down with the knife, trying to keep it flat, and working the knife down the side of the fillet. Bam, there we have snapper skin, and we have snapper filet. Skin goes away. Last little piece, just get rid of this rib cage right here, because that won't taste as good. Lastly, remove these little pin bones right here. You can feel them with your fingers, so just feel it out to see where they are. And then take that guy off, throw it away. We'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, guys, check it out. Have you ever, on a Sunday, got a hankering for a delicious Chick-fil-A sandwich? Well, I've got the solution for you. Today, we're making a Chick-fil-A imitation fish sandwich. We're gonna take that mangrove snapper, fry it up, and serve it on a delicious bun. So, first thing we gotta do is we gotta marinate our fish fillets. So I have about a cup of pickle juice, and then I'm gonna add about half a cup of milk, just eyeballing this. And that is gonna be our marinade for our fish. And we're just gonna marinate it for like 30 minutes. So Victor and I took the time to ensure that we took every bit of little scales and every piece of, inspect every single piece of meat for just anything that we didn't want in our fish. So now I'm cutting the pieces to the size that I want them to be for the sandwiches. These thin, smaller pieces are gonna fry up very nicely. And I'm just adding them to our marinade of pickle juice and milk. Again, it's not gonna take very, very long. About 30 minutes for these to marinate. It wouldn't be a Chick-fil-A sandwich without some Chick-fil-A sauce. So we're taking some mayonnaise. That's gonna be the base of our sauce. Some barbecue sauce. Some yellow mustard. Mustard is the best condiment. <laughs> Not if you ask Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, adding what's left of our honey. 
And obviously this isn't measured out portions, this is just eyeballing it. May not taste exactly like Chick-fil-A sauce, but with all these delicious ingredients together, it should taste just fine. There's no shot because Chick-fil-A sauce has 47,000 ingredients in it. <laughs> and our last little touch is some lemon juice. Just about that should be good. You want it? No. Now we need to bread our fish. So we have about three quarters of a cup of flour, just normal flour. Now I have some powdered sugar. And go one tablespoon. Heaping. Heaping tablespoon. Two tablespoons. And I think this powdered sugar is what gives that breading that signature Chick-fil-A taste. Lastly, just a little bit of black pepper. Season that to taste. And some salt. And just mix all of this together until it's more homogenous. Some of the powdered sugar kind of wants to be stuck together. Take our mangrove snapper out of the marinade and we're gonna add it into a mixture of egg and milk. Allow the excess to drip off. And then we're gonna lightly coat it with our flour, powdered sugar mix. I'm just try and get it evenly coated on the outside here. All right, we got a hot pan outside. We're gonna add peanut oil. I'm gonna add maybe to the point where it's about, I don't know, eighth of an inch to a quarter inch in the pan. Want it to be able to add that crispy edge to our fish. Add our fish. Again, these are really small pieces, so they should fry very, very fast. I also dredged them in the in the flour multiple times. I, I didn't stick them in the milk or the egg or anything, but I kept adding flour to them to just help aid in getting a nice crispy piece. So we'll do this in two batches just not to crowd it. So this looks about perfect and we'll wait till it gets that nice golden brown and I'll try and flip it without messing it up. So we've got some melted butter and we're gonna add it to our brioche buns. We just picked these up from our local Publix. If you guys don't have Publix in your area, I'm really sorry because Publix is where shopping is a pleasure. So we got a hot pan here, nothing on it. And this is just gonna crisp up the bun just very, very slightly. We're just gonna cook that one side shouldn't take very long at all so that's exactly what I'm looking for just a little bit of char just it chars up the butter a little bit and just to enhance the flavor very very slightly not trying to overcook them at all or get them toasted or anything like that definitely want them to be nice and soft to complement the crispiness of the fish I'm just slightly pressing it down so it kind of contacts the pan in totality batch number two Beautiful golden brown. While we're frying it, you can kind of smell the pickle juice. It's just that, it's that signature Chick-fil-A smell. Add some of that Chick-fil-A sauce that we made. I just, we just had it in the freezer, freezer, in the fridge to thicken it up a little bit. Add that to the base. Pickles. Add our mangrove snapper. Tomato. A little bit of lettuce. And we have our Chick-fil-A fried mango snapper sandwich with some homemade Chick-fil-A sauce. Looks delicious, smells delicious. I'm excited to dig in. Ryan always said, I want to be interviewed at the big green table. Guess what? You're the one being interviewed today. I am. And I'm the one being interviewed today. And so are you, and yeah. so is bro. Let's yeah. see what the this master the first chef bite. thinks of his own first creation. Bite. Well, 10 out of 10 on the crunch. I heard it on both you guys. You guys want more sauce? I'm thinking more sauce, just a little bit more sauce. And you can taste the 
the essence of the pickle juice that it was marinated in. And the crunch, it's the powdered sugar that I think gives it that signature Chick-fil-A taste. We got a killer sandwich made by Chef Ryan in the house. Perfect little fish to do it with. I think it's neat to combine multiple strips of fish and put on one sandwich versus one like big piece, like a big piece of grouper. You killed it, dude. It's very similar to Chick-fil-A. Tastes very good, and I think Chick-fil-A might have to add fish to their menu. You might be onto something. It's, it's damn good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, although it's almost 3.30 and these boys are finally feeding me lunch, I thought this Chick-fil-A sandwich, Chick-fil-A sandwich was excellent. I think it's really cool to do a replay on something that a lot of you guys are familiar with, and it hands down really tasted like a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I mean, it's not chicken, but it's fish, and you could have fooled me. It doesn't really taste like fish when cooked like this, but it was a very, very good sandwich, so I'm happy. So thank you very much. Thank you. Guys, I think they said it all. It was delicious. We got a full day of cooking ahead of us. <laughs> This is meal number one. We're gonna cook with Victor, and then we're gonna cook again tonight. So it's a full day of cooking. But huge shout out to Max for taking us out, taking us out over in Tampa in the West Coast. It was an awesome trip. It was cool to see a different fishery. Love it. Delicious meal. I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later. Peace. Bye.